So hello and welcome to another Black Vault. I think it's our fourth or fifth, I believe. We're looking at the uh, Imperial Guard Omnibus uh, Volume 1 today. Uh, as ever, uh, it is myself, Darth Sebius, and my good companion here, Brzezowski. How are you doing? Doing well. Awesome scenes. So shall we get on with some Imperial goodness? Um, I shall give us, here we are, Miss Steve Lyons, a man in a TARDIS. So, Steve Lyons is a British writer. He has written several Doctor Who spin off novels, as well as a programme guide for Star Trek, Red Dwarf, and Blackadder. His Doctor Who spin off novels include the new series Adventures and the Steelers of Dreams. Um, he's also written a number of books and audio dramas for Black Library, including The Madness Within, uh, Down Amongst the Dead, Ice Guard, and Death World, which is our first book today. So, you want to take us through Death World? Alright, so in Death World you have a group of Katachan jungle fighters. Uh, they're on a ship orbiting the planet of Rogar 3. They have been informed that Rogar 3, originally believed to be ripe for uh, colonization, has suddenly and unexpectedly been termed a Death World, thus requiring their assistance in dealing with the orc presence on the planet. Upon arriving, um, the uh, men of Lorenzo's squad are not very impressed either with the jungle or with the Validian regiments already on world. There uh, quickly ensues a fight in the mess hall where the Validians lose quite badly. <laughs> Um, and uh, interrupting it, we meet our first antagonist of the story, uh, Commissar McKenzie. Young, still wet around the ears, looking to prove himself, thinks himself the uh, best thing ever to happen to the Imperium. Just pretty much like any Commissar, really. And uh, so, uh, McKenzie informs the squad of... Their, of the situation on Rogar 3, you got the orcs that have suddenly stopped being quite so stupid and started being a hell of a lot smarter. Um, and uh, ha in particular, uh, Mackenzie goes on about how the planet has changed. And uh, his uh, adjutant, um, what's his name, Braxton, uh, is the one that really provides the more useful information. Um, uh, long story short, you had uh, jungle lizards that, for the longest time, stayed away from the guardsmen, and then all of a sudden developed poisonous spites and were just coming after them like no tomorrow. Uh, you have, uh, you know, mutant plants that weren't attacking anyone, and next thing you know, we're spitting acid at everybody. And then, uh, the, 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 the important thing was the, uh, the ghosts that Braxton had referenced that supposedly lured men out into the jungle to be killed. Now, the squad goes out, goes out on its way, uh, moving through the jungle with Mackenzie in tow, <coughs> and they... First encounter spitting plants. Um, they encounter a flock of aggressive and angry birds that, after dying, occasionally stitch themselves back together and keep trying to kill them. Um, they end up going on and on, fighting their way through the jungle towards the encampment of the orc boss, which they call Big Green. And the story pretty much revolves more around. Lorenzo and him hoping to acquire his his um, Katachan name, uh, which is you know his you know funky nickname, before being killed. Because as time goes on, the planet is very quickly changing to meet each threat posed to it by the Imperial Guardsmen. And uh, eventually what ends up happening is they encounter a blue light that kind of like distracts and hypnotizes 
whoever is looking at it and uh, drags them off into the jungle. Uh, Trooper Dugan, I think it was, uh, gets lured off and is never seen again. Lorenzo is lured off, but manages to break the, the hold of the light on him. Um, and uh, eventually, they come upon the orcs themselves. Now, just previous to this, they end up coming under attack by a man-shaped um, swamp thing, pretty much. Just, you know, a bunch of leaves and dirt and grass all clumped together looking like a man that attacks them. And, um... This, uh, this goes on for a bit. They have the constant feeling of being watched. Um, they end up discovering a small orc encampment that they can't go around. They attack it. A few guys in the squad die. Um, Lorenzo doesn't. Um, I actually can't quite remember if Mackenzie dies before, during, or after this. But, um, <clears throat> they eventually discover, uh, where the main orcs are hiding. By this time, there's no more Mackenzie, he's dead. Braxton's still kicking. Uh, Braxton's actually making a very good report for himself, and not being completely incompetent in the jungle like most of the other Validians. But, uh, they discover a, uh, a mine, uh, a mining complex that the orcs took over, and they're digging for something. And, uh... They sneak in, they track down the, the orc, and effectively battle the entire base of orcs, all the while the walls are caving in, lava is filling all the tunnels as the planet tries desperately to just kill them all in one big swoop. And then at the end, Lorenzo and Braxton are the only survivors, and Braxton is the one to give Lorenzo his uh, given name, which is Long Run, because Lorenzo was always the one thinking ahead before he acted. Instead of sticking his head into the lion's mouth without thinking, he, you know, knocked out his teeth first. Uh, the whole, the whole novel pretty much was a campy, cartoony. Uh, presentation of a squad of Rambo clones going through, roughing up the jungle, and, you know, fighting the orcs, and, you know, all around doing a lot of stuff that your typical guardsman really wouldn't be able to do. Um, I think Seb agrees with me in that it, it, its presentation was uh, just v fun, exciting, uh, definitely well written, but overall cartoony and a little, just a little silly. But it's, it's got that whole, there's the wonderfully, uh, like, late 80s, early 90s action film, sort of, that you can imagine Stallone. This would, like, that, that the entire book would make a, a much better Expendables than Expendables. <laughs> like, Expendables mm -hmm. in the Jungle, basically. Like, this is what, is what this is. Like, and yeah, it, it, it does suffer from all those sort of stereotypical things, but it, it's just so much fun. Like, it is popcorn. Like, it, it's utter popcorn. I don't. I don't know. Like I. I. You. I think. I think we like it more than we even should. It's just. It's just a lot mm. of fun. But um. Yes, it's my. It's my first. Uh, sort of getting my hands on the the Catachans. Like I know you're a big fan of the Catachans, Brett. So, it's not nice yeah. to see them. And there's a great great amount of detail about it still. Like it. It's. Like the actual story and the interaction and what's going on is very popcorny, but it's very well grounded within the 40k universe still. Hmm. Um, yeah, like well, so, so much so I, I've got a couple of the models here. Um, but um, on the left with the the Kalachang Fang and the the pistol is uh, Sly Marbo, who is uh, one of the actual ca named characters uh, for the Kalachangs in the tabletop game, and uh, he's the one tailing them through the entire um, story as we go along. So that, that was, I thought that was quite nice because I, I I didn't realize until you pointed out Brett that they were real characters in it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, is a cracking affair. Is there anything else you sort of wanted to go into before we move on from Death World? Uh, no, nah, that just about covers it. Yeah, crazy Rambo's crazy jungle, 
Death World. Oh, that, 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 I, I thought something I, I wanted to say. Um, you kind of get the feeling with all the with all the weird lights and the things that are going on and the I don't know supernaturalness of it. I, I was almost convinced there was going to be some something chaotic and dark at the, the heart of the the planet. And obviously, like all the black vaults come with like a, a kind of spoiler warning because we're going to talk about the things that happen in the books. But um, there isn't like it is just the planet itself doesn't want to be messed with it just wants the imperial guard to leave they're not going to leave and they're going to continue this whole pointless run around but it's not evil <laughs> but they still have to mm-hmm. fight it so yeah, it's kind of i thought that was quite interesting so yeah um, i will move us on to uh introduce mitchell scanlon who is this <laughs> interesting chap here rather difficult to get a decent photo of and looks very much like rufus hound there um i think but um, so Mitchell Scanlon is a Welsh author of several books and short stories in the Warhammer fantasy and 40k universe. Uh, he also wrote the Horace Heresy novel uh, *Descent of Angels* um, and the fantasy novel *Quarter Arms* um, about the uh, Hotchland swordsman. Um, he began working for Black Library, scripting the Hellbrandt uh, Grimm comic from the Warmer, the Warmer Monthly uh, comic series. And uh, the book we have from him is uh, 15 Hours*. So yeah, fifteen hours um, is kind of like in many ways it's all of the Imperial Guard experience, like the standard Imperial Guard experience, just compacted into one, one short horrific <laughs> story. Really. Um, so after four months basic training, um, the Jumo um, volunteers uh, with Garzman Lan, who's the main protagonist of the story, um, and embark on their first campaign to put down the rebel uprising, but. Uh, Due, due to a small snafu, um, it turns out that they've actually been sent to the wrong planet indeed. <laughs> and they get dropped on uh, Brusherock, which is a city that has been uh, infested, or the planet's been infested with, with over 10,000 orcs. And this is a huge epic war against the orcs, um, which are going for 10 years. Uh, Lan finds all of his company dead within um, a very short scene, which makes the beginning of uh, Saving Private Ryan look like a Monday morning. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of horrific. He's the only survivor. Um, and he finds himself, uh, yeah, welcomed to Brusherac and joining the uh, the 902nd Varden Rifles. Uh, oh, no, sorry. It's it's about 10 million orcs, not 10,000 orcs. <laughs> I do apologize. There's a few more orcs than that. Um, so we see him right at the beginning of the book uh, as a mortally wounded guardsman, just desperate to find out whether he's made it to the 15-hour um, limit, which is the the expected life expectancy of uh, one of the new recruits in Brusherac. So he's desperate to find out. He's lost and alone and wants to know, has he made the time? Yeah, we, we follow him through. Um, we, we come back to him landing and joining the Varden Rifles. Um, he meets the, these commanding officers and the apothecaries and just sees how much of a horrific state um, of play all the soldiers and equipment and everything is. Um, they have uh, had some supplies drop though. They, they even had a uh, a drop pod land with uh, full of condoms <laughs> once <laughs> for no uh, real apparent reason. Just the monitorum kind of doing what they do. But I think the, the the wonderful thing about this book is you see every level. So you see the guardsmen, you see the 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 corpse burners, you see like. Um, there's snippets of a lost um, orphan eating rats and trying to survive and not being caught by the Imperium. You get in the in the head of a little Gretchen sniper for a little while. Um, you even see the, the Grand Marshal. You see, yeah, ev- every level. It, the, the triage tent, them desperately trying to help all the uh, injured troops without any um, supplies or equipment, essentially. Um, there's someone bleeding out on, on a gurney. And they catch all the blood in, in, and they wrap it up and try and use that for a transfusion. Um, That sounds rather healthy and like a good idea. (laughs) Just to really give you the idea of how horrific things are. Um, And eventually, um, it turns out, they get sent uh, on a uh, midnight uh, raid to to survey the uh, surrounding situation. And his squad runs into a bunch of pain boys uh, trying to find some good pickings from the dead orcs or see if there's any they can revive and uh, he, he is shot and sadly dies in no man's land feeling that he is very happy that uh, he's definitely made it past 15 hours now and uh, kind of dies happy even though he has had the worst possible day that anyone could ever have 
<laughs> Although he hasn't had to do it for ten years. <laughs> um, mm. So yeah, like I, I just thought it's it's, it's just a, it's a cracking book. Um, I know you had a, you, you've only had a, 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 a little look, but um, just just from hearing kind of the the, the ideas and things that are going on, um, it, yeah. How do you feel, Brett? Like like I said, it's the whole it's the one it's a one stop shop for the entire Imperial Guard experience, which I, is the thing that I enjoyed. Yeah, I agree. Um, it was a uh, like if anyone needed like a proper in- introduction to the Imperial Guard. Uh, f- fifteen hours would be, would be that introduction. Definitely, and it, it, it like no holds barred. <laughs> it is just the Imperial Guard and all their snaffering glory. <laughs> um, so yeah, that and uh, yeah, as we said, there's the the, the two um, different pieces of artwork we have for the cover there, there and there. So that's a cracking book. And um, the the last one we've got today, where well, it's, it's in audio drama, is uh, Waiting Death, again by Steve Lyons, who wrote uh, Death World. Um, now, Waiting Death um, is, yeah, and again, it's the Katachan second again, um, being led by Iron Hand Strachan, as you can see him there. Um, he's also got a model, as I showed you, there's Sly Marbo, and then you see Strachan there also. That's a really really nice detailed model I do like that but Waiting Death so yeah narrated by my favourite narrator Toby Longworth who just is a, the, the noise of 40k as far as I'm concerned but um it's so it's Borealis 4 it's a jungle death world um full of chaos cults uh, that have been found by explorators Iron Hand Strack and his second uh, Ketachans um are sent to investigate and to, to deal with this situation um and while they're hunting through the jungle, uh, we catch up with them uh, after an initial engagement with a bunch of heretics. Uh, and Strachan is barking orders um, and some really wonderful, wonderful lines, including, you still have one hand, pick up that las gun, and it only takes one hand to hold in your, in- <laughs> your, your guts in to keep fighting. Um, again, this like I think this takes the whole crazy popcorn, campy action filmness of Death Row to, a, to another level, but it's still just wonderfully wonderful um so while they're trekking after an attack they come across a clearing uh comes a very strange boy called cadence moonglow uh, who seems unworried about 30 las guns pointed at his face um and he brings them back to what seems to be a um, a lovely settlement untouched by the killer jungle or the uh rabid chaotic heretics that have uh, taken over the planet at this point, my spidey sense was going off, so uh, <laughs> you'll probably be hardly surprised to find that, um, yeah, things aren't always as lovely as they seem, um, even though they're welcomed in, given supplies and food, uh, given shelter, but they still put out the sentries out. Um, while on watch, uh, they come across they're being at- attacked. Uh, there's a, a bit, a bit of a scuffle, um, but it seems their attackers aren't really desperately trying to hurt them too much, which is all very interesting um, and even Strachan loses his fag at one point and uh, they actually leave um, the monsters these mutated horrific things that he keeps seeing they leave his fang and leave him sort of unmolested after the first encounter um, and he starts to feel very odd um, about everything that's going on um, and suddenly he realises where well, they've not been fighting him so much and even though they seem like horrific deformed monsters he kind of lets them go and orders his men to stand down and the monsters swarm into the village and just destroy and kill everyone within the village um, and as the sun comes up and the village is destroyed it uh, appears that the, the mutants weren't mutants and monsters they were actually other imperial guard <laughs> they were trying desperately not to kill uh, the Catachans, even though the Catachans were desperately trying to kill and did successfully kill a number of theirs, um, so yeah, it's a big, it's a big, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a short but sweet epic, hoorah um, of Imperial Guard finding Imperial Guard, thinking that they're mutants, um, and yeah, everything kind of works out all, all in the end. It seems to be over, um, but everyone apart from the uh, the young boy Cadence Moonglow, scary, scary hippie name. Um, is yeah he, he struck and follows him off into the woods uh, where he battles him um, Cadence now at this point has some epic uh, Sith <laughs> chaotic powers and kind of psychically breaking limbs and rupturing things within, within him but uh, Strachan has a response to this obviously he throws his fang square into its face and he sees that it's actually a pink horror so the whole thing had been uh, a Tzitian kind of uh, 
hallucination. Um, but he is left in the jungle, tattered, bleeding, near death, but uh, happy because he knows his boys will be there any moment. And I think one of the wonderful things about this audio drama is it it ends with you just hear the sounds of people approaching. It doesn't say that he's rescued or anything, but you just hear that. I think using the fact that you're using audio um, that effectively is, is good because um, the the music and the production of some of the audio dramas is wonderful. It really is for the Black Library and others, yeah, not so much. <laughs> um, but hey, how did you find uh, Wayne Deathbrat? I know you're obviously you're you're a huge Katachan man, so. <laughs> Um, I definitely found it a little bit more ridiculous and much more uh, campy action movie than Death World, but <clears throat> I really enjoyed it. I, uh, how, uh, it, uh, I, my spidey sense was tingling, uh, too, when, um, when, uh, Grice was noticing, that uh, Grice, uh, Spacken was noticing all the stuff that was going wrong, and, um, I forget the name of the, uh, officer he was with that was like, oh no, we have to save and protect these people, blah blah blah, and Strachan's like, yeah, no. General, can't think of, can't think of his name on top of my head, but yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you then, Brett. My apologies. That's right. Um, but, yeah, just how, and, and Strachan's just like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yes, there is definitely some uh, grinding between between the the, the Katachans and the uh, the the rather the high riding um, general. Yeah, generals and the Katachans just don't seem to get on so well or last very long. Uh, like you said, Mackenzie in Deathworld <laughs> didn't do so well, but I think yeah, if he was actually tempted by the light and walked himself into a trip mine, <laughs> good times for him. So yeah, we should uh, we should probably talk about. Um, what, what we're going to be rating these books. So, uh, Death World, first of all, what are you going to give that out of five, Brett? Uh, I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of five. There's a lot of stuff that could have been better, but at the same time, it was very exciting. It kept you reading, and uh, it was fun. It was, it was worth the read. I, I, I literally couldn't agree more. I think 4.5 4. is 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 perfectly apt. Like I, I want to give it the five because it is that much fun. But like the writing just is like just isn't quite the same as some of the great mm. wonderful things in the in the thing. So into the vault it goes. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, Fifteen hours. Um, out of five, Brett. You gonna? Um, definitely. Uh, I'm gonna give a five out of five for that one. Yeah, I'm I, well. I love it. We are we are in we're in such concurrence today because uh, yeah I agree five five out of five. If you ever need to read an Imperial card book, this is the book you need to read. You're just like done. And if you are a big Empire Imperial Guard fan, I suggest you get hold of it as soon as you can. And we may have spoiled a few things, but it, it's again it's the telling and the, and the bit the bits you get to see more than anything that make it what it is. And um, finally, waiting death out of five. Um, a four out of five. Four out of five. Oh, I, 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 I'm gonna say four out of four, four point five for me. But uh, but four, four, four to four point five. Um, are we still putting that one in? Uh, definitely. Awesome scene. So yeah, for the Imperial Guard, have done well. <laughs> uh, Steve Lyons and uh, Mitchell Scanlon. Steve Lyons there, Mitchell Scanlon there. Well, well done. You have made it into the vault. <laughs> and here we have the vault. So so far we have uh, Red Fury of the Blood Angels saga, <laughs> the only one of the saga that made it in. <laughs> uh, the Path of the Elder series all made it in, looking wonderful. And the Imperial Guard books. Um, I've got a feeling that the the, uh, the vault might be growing rapidly because uh, next month we have these, the Night Lord series by uh, Aaron Demsky Bowden. And I haven't finished them all yet, but uh, I, I'm already feeling. I'm not sure about you, but I think they I think they already have their own space <laughs> in there. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of knew they were gonna go in before we started. <laughs> so yeah, Night Lords next month, and uh, is it the the Sigma trilogy after that? We're actually be looking at some more fantasy. Uh, yep. Uh, next month is uh, the Sigma trilogy. Then uh, after that, either the uh, word bearers or the uh, or uh, the Nagash. Uh, is that a trilogy? 
Yeah, yeah so there's, there was a, there's a series. I'm not sure how many of them there are, but yeah. So awesome scenes. So yeah. So Night Lords to come. Uh, the Held and Hammer Six Sigmas trilogy, Word Bearers, and the Gash. So yeah, we're going to kind of do a few of the uh, the big um, fantasy books as well because people have uh, requested that, and we we'd like to listen to you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, it's a bit short but sweet, like um, just the the general nature of these books being like kind of the action films that they are in a book, um, kind of means that there isn't that much of a plot for us to go go into it really. So it's a bit of a short but sweet episode today. Um, is there anything else you kind of you want to go into, uh, Brett, before we go into the outro? <coughs> um. Yeah, that not was really. a beautiful face you just pulled. I know, wasn't that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> and that's now recorded for posterity. Um, okay, well, we'll go into the outro. Uh, Dice Troop. I own that face. I better get royalties and everyone does that face. All right. <laughs> See, but do you own that face? Because um, previously George Lucas, but now did Disney own uh, Carrie Fisher's face? They own the likeness. So maybe Fox, <laughs> Fox owns your likeness. <laughs> So um, yeah, we're going to the the outro. We are like Dice Troop is for a non-profit thing. We do all these videos for free. We we'll continue to do them for free, but we do have the um, the the, blah, 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 the ability for people to, to donate on the Tumblr blog. That's dicetroop.tumblr. I know some people already have. Epic thank you to all you wonderful people, which means that like yeah, don't Dice Troop isn't and the, uh, us individually aren't making an epic loss now, which is awesome. Uh, <laughs> We've got some. There's lots of new shows and things coming tomorrow. We have the first episode of Law Keepers, uh, which will be Brett and I joined by uh, Corruption Points, who will be, who will be our RPG man as we get into uh, an intro to Forgotten Realms, the Dungeon Dragon setting. And then, yeah, Hammer on Saturday, and Table Talks Monday. Uh, Plays Walk with Moshpit, uh, second episode coming at some point next week. Keep your eyes on the Dice Troop thing to find out about that and yeah Law Keepers will going to be every week now so next week will be Magic the Gathering an intro to the whole lore with that and yeah awesome scenes thank you all for joining us and I think we shall end it there uh, so tell you bye and thank you very much for joining us peace out homies <laughs>